What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope you're ready to enjoy the weekend. Make sure it's a safe weekend. Self-isolation, social distancing, whatever it is. Today's my last day of self-isolation. I get to go outside tomorrow, but still not see anybody. All right, let's get into it. The U.S. lost 700 and 1,000 jobs in March. This is the first monthly decline in 2010. Uh, we also have oil jumping another 10% after yesterday's 24% move. Lots of headlines all around oil with Russia saying they want to make cuts. Apparently Trump is having a meeting today at, what time is this meeting today? 3 p.m. with some oil execs. I'm anticipating, well, this is what we were anticipating, a move like this, because the chart is telling us a move like this was going to come. I'm anticipating some more big headlines on the weekend. So going to be swinging oil positions over the weekend again. My idea today is really to look at BA, to look at Netflix. Those are the places I'm going to start to look at building some positions in. And of course, watch what's happening here with the S&P 500. But let's get to a couple more headlines, what we got going on here. Uh, oil prices, everything is relating around oil prices. Let me just see here, anything very notable. Hey, STZ beat earnings today. Really good earnings for Constellations brands. And that's what we saw, a little bit of a pump early from CGC and also see, and they've given some of that back. And we also CGC, their Storts and Bickle company that they bought also got approval today from Health Canada for their device, medical, medical use, Approval. So we're going to see if that's going to have any effect. CGC got great earnings last time. A lot of it contributed from that Storts and Bickle company. So anticipate more good revenues coming from that acquisition. Looking like their best acquisition to date. Let's see what else we got here. Anything very notable. Boeing agrees to remove 75, 737 MAX airplanes from the order book. A lot of headlines coming out on Boeing right now. And it's a flat open for now. So I'm really going to be looking at Boeing today. I want to see if that other gap at that 114 level is going to fill. I would like that range to fill before going into a position, but going to monitor it. That's it. Let's talk about the S&P 500. Talk about what we're looking at today. Don't forget today's Friday. And every Friday we've seen the S&P 500 at the end of the day. Spy. See a major pump. And last week we also saw a major pump and then a major pullback. So we've got to be aware of that going into the weekend. Remember that the common thread is going to be nobody wants to hold over the weekend. Well, we saw that last weekend. I went into a bear position and what happened on Monday, we didn't see a bear open. We actually saw a bull open. So let's understand that yes, there's going to be headline risk over the weekend. We know this, but it's not working out. We haven't seen limit downs and limit ups in over a week now. I think it's coming on two weeks actually. So looking over here, looking at SPY, a couple things I'm watching today. Let's zoom in here and get very close. You can see right now, this is with extended hours on, on the S&P 500. Okay, we're holding this potential, this potential of this pitchfork. Okay, we're holding this lower trend line. But you can see we've got three touches up over here in this 253.13 level. That's the level we're going to want to see a break of early. We also just hit it up right now. Recently, it looks like, let me just double check, was that just now? Looks like it was just now and rejected again. So this 253 level, so that's gonna be the first level. Bulls are gonna to wanna to see break today and bears are not gonna to wanna to see break. If we break that 253 level, we got the Kumo cloud on the four hour. Now note the four hour Kumo cloud, we have not traded above it since all time high. Okay, so notice this. We have not traded above the four hour Kumo cloud since all time high. So this would be the first, first attempt at a breakout because we haven't come back and even touched the upper part of the Kumo cloud, but this would be the first attempt of a breakout of the Kumo cloud. Then we got that trend line, and that trend line is from all time high on the S&P 500, broadening wedge, so it would be beautiful to get that breakout today. If we break all three of those items, I believe we're coming back over here, and we're gonna test the lower parallel, sorry, lower quartile, and we're going to come up over here and test our highs on the S&P 500. So we gotta break all these items first. The first key one is gonna be this 253 because we've got three touches on it. And then we start looking up at 263.70. Could happen today, yes, a $10 move, $12 move on the S&P 500, we've been seeing that. And we'll see what happens at the end of the day, the end of the day action like we've seen basically the past eight weeks. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for today, key levels. Those are the levels we're going to want to break. 
U.S. oil. Let's talk about U.S. oil here because I know everybody is carrying positions over and wanting to make this play. So you can see here we're seeing continuation. Very easy move. This is the play that always ends up working out. You know, people get really scared. They get too caught up in all the headlines. I don't believe it's ever going to recover. And we know there's a bounce coming. It's a corrective move. There's always going to be a correction. Now, this correction could allow for another leg down. That's potentially what could happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think everyone, the initial drop, the initial 30% drop in oil was due to this Russia and Saudi crisis and now we're starting to see a lot of intervention and a lot of people trying to make this work and potentially they come to a deal and if we do come to a deal i believe we'll be trading back you know potentially we'll at least get back into the 30s right i think we'll go to the 40s potentially so that's what we're going to be watching for eight exponential at 34.92 that's the main level that's the level i want to be watching for for a potential back test we don't need to get all the way there but we got to get towards the eight exponential whenever you get too far away from the eight exponential, you come back and you test it. Okay, we got too far, we're going to come back and we're going to test it. That's the way the market works. The market has patterns. Doesn't matter the vehicle that you're trading, the patterns are all the same. They always end up working out. So congratulations to those trading it. USO, let's check out what USO is doing here. Yesterday we got the nice pump. We're getting a bullish engulfing candlestick on the weekly, huge volume. We're looking for the $7 range in USO. So that's what we're going to be watching going into. Let's see what we're doing here in extended hours. What are we trading at? 511. And what are we trading at now? 582. So we broke yesterday's highs. Beautiful. Yesterday, the key was holding that 8 exponential on the hourly. Boom. Held it perfectly. And here we are. Continuation on the breakout. There is some bearish divergence here on the hourly. Reminder, you're up hundreds of percents. Have your game plan. Don't care about anybody else's game plan. Have your game plan. How are you going to manage your greed, hope, fear, regret? Regret. If you sold, if you sold everything yesterday, are you dealing with some FOMO right now? Are you dealing with regret? If you kept some in, hey, are you happy? If you sell everything today and then Monday it pops up and it opens up at seven dollars, how are you going to feel? Manage your game plan. Don't worry about anybody else's game plan. Stick to yours. Let's get into the ticker requests that are out there. Let's start us off with, and why can't I find it? Here we are, space. So space is the first one I am swinging a space position today. Looks like it was down a little bit here in the pre-market. Let me see what it's trading at right now. And it's pretty much flat to where we closed yesterday. Well, let's say we're trading at 13 now. And yesterday we closed at, where did we close at? 12.96, so slightly higher open. So really we want to see a break of this lower high here. And we want to confirm the doji morning star candle on the daily 1328 would be key so if we could break 1328 we get some nice follow through here and we confirm this morning star candlestick and then we start looking up towards that 1422 level potential back to the eight exponential that's what i'm going to be watching today on space we want to continue the momentum we had yesterday at the end of the day Obviously, this whole thing is invalidated if we break yesterday's low. And that was my entry based off of yesterday's low. So that's where my stop is. So when you have, hey, go look at coaching mentoring. When you enter, where is your exit? That's where my exit is. If we lose 1240, I'm exiting. If we reject 1422, I'm exiting. Those are the two uh, entry and exit, sorry, exit scenarios today on space. That's what I'm gonna be watching. Entry reason is the golden pocket. That's my baby. That's my bread and butter. So let's go on. LSPD. LSPD. Long position. Okay, let's go look at this chart. So this chart is curling. So it is looking for a curl back to the upside. If it were to make a new low, we would be looking at some bullish divergence more than likely. 1425 is where we closed yesterday. And we're trading here. And I'm looking at the TSX ticker. This has a US. No, it doesn't have a US. Okay, so 1425, really. Let me see what LSPD is bidding at right now. And it's much higher, 1555. So let's see here. Is that going to hold? And it doesn't look like it's going to hold. It looks like it'll come back down to where we are. It doesn't make sense right now. The next bid is at 1450. So we should be looking at an open between 1450, 1470, likely if that continues to hold. This chart has consolidated nicely here. Yesterday was a spike in bear volume on this consolidation, so we should be running out of sellers, but it is giving back a lot. We've lost the GP. 7.786 is the only one left. I mean, you're looking for a curl on this chart, so really today, potentially, you're gonna get that curl. 
at least you want to see a 15 minute trend change first. That's what I'd be looking for. So if you could get a 15 minute trend change trading over the eight exponential, then you could say, hey, I'm going to place my stop at the bottom. That's a potential scenario here on LSPD. Uber. Uh, let's check it out. Okay, let's check out Uber. So there's a daily gap. So you're looking at the gap. Let's check it out here. Let's go look at Uber. Yeah, there's a gap down over here. Almost got filled yesterday. Didn't get to there to the penny. Tiny little bit of a lower wick. This is looking like an inverse head and shoulder. So we are looking for that right shoulder to develop and potentially we could start developing it today. Of course, everything's going to be related to what the market does. Does the market beat those areas we mentioned out of the gate? B253, beat the Kumo cloud, beat the trend line. If we do, we're going to see a good day in the market. If we don't and we start to reject those levels and we start to pull back significantly, we know all these names are going to be looking for some continuation to the downside. 2273 is the gap. Let's see if we run a fib here from our low to our high. We're right on the 0.32. If we do lose that level, then yes, we will be looking lower and we will be looking down over here at the golden pocket. That's what I'd be watching for. BB, TSX, long. Let's check it out. Blackberry on the TSX. So we're starting, like, so we had the bearish abandon set up here, which was confirmed, huge move to the downside. So it looks like that was caused because of earnings. Yeah, it looks like it was caused because of earnings. See where we're pulling back here. So we see two upper wicks in the past couple of days. We did lose the golden pocket, so it's 0.786. Let me see what BB is bidding at right now. So we know that likely these earnings have already all been priced in. BB right now looking like pretty much a flat open. We know that these earnings likely have already all been priced in because we've had two days. We've got two big upper wicks. Let's zoom in here, check out the hourly a little bit. Hourly is starting to show some signs of a little bit of a falling wedge, okay? So when you see a little bit of a falling wedge, you know there's a potential breakout about to come in and happen on this chart. So let's use this off of this wick here. Down over here, we can see some got a little bit of a falling wedge. So I'd be waiting potentially playing it off of the lower trend line or waiting for the break. You can see the volume is dropping off. So that means also the selling, those that wanted to sell is selling off as well. So I look for a curl out of here, eight exponential. That's what we want to see. It is hourly oversold as well. So it'd be an hourly oversold bounce. It's just coming out of that condition right now. You zoom in here, check out the 15 minute chart. You can see that on the 15 minute chart. Nice falling wedge setup here. And move this trend line a little bit lower. And it's getting tighter. So the apex of this falling wedge would bring us to one o'clock today. So I would anticipate there's going to be a break of this pattern. Shop, going long on Shopify. So let's check out shop here. I mean, shop's never proven to be a bad trade going long. So yesterday we had a gap down, spinning top candlestick at the bottom of this trend. Huge pullback all the way down to what, the 0.786 here on this last move. And even a little bit more, so notable. But that's it, you get that big flush, gap down, spinning top candlestick, huge volume. It should be looking to subside how much more down pressure there is. We close at 346.30. Let me see what shop is bidding at right now. Let's go to extended hours here on the hourly. 345.61, 351. So it's a little bit of a higher open. This has been the buy zone as well, okay? This has been the buy zone and we got pretty close here. You can see the high volume nodes right off of it. So potential, you're gonna open up as an inside bar. The easy play is, hey, let the inside bar develop or you wait for the breakout of 365 because you know you've got a gap to fill all the way up to 381 and then you got the eight exponential as well. JPM, JPM, JP Morgan Chase. Okay, so let's check it out. Nice bullish and golfing candlestick yesterday. Big volume, obviously. XLF, banks, I mean, people are looking at this as a great opportunity, so I can't imagine JP Morgan Chase not gonna be a great opportunity. It is a weekly inside bar and it is Friday. So a little bit choppy, but yesterday was a big bullish and golfing candlestick, so we wanna look for continuation, or you could just look to play the break of the weekly inside bar next week. That is the setup you could be doing. But yesterday, big move, looking for continuation today. 87.51 is where we closed. Let's see what we're trading at here in extended hours, 87.51. We're trading a little bit lower, so it's gonna not get fall through of this bullish and golf against it to start. It's gonna be a lower open. So you could be looking at, hey, maybe I just play the break of the new high at 87.91. So break of yesterday's high, or you let it develop for next week and you play the inside bar. 
Bull or bear break. BA, let's check out BA here. And it's looking like a flat open right now. Pretty much flat open. And we're in the golden pocket zone. And I want to make the entry and I'm likely going to make a long entry today, whether it's in calls or whether it's just starting out with some shares, looking for a long position here. There is the gap down at 114.49 we need to be aware of. We do have a four hour falling wedge here. Okay, we do have a four hour falling wedge. And that's what extended hours on. So in this zone here, that's what I want to be watching. I want to see a break out of it. This four hour candlestick yesterday is a morning star setup. So we need to get that confirmed in the first half today. So if we start to see that candlestick starting to get confirmed in the first half today, I will take that position with a stop at the low of the four hour morning star and then look for a re-entry at the gap fill. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Anticipating that this chart's consolidated enough after its big move, huge move to the upside. We've consolidated all the way to the golden pocket. I wanna see it curl back to the upside. Then, which we should anticipate is going to set up a daily equilibrium. So there's a decision to make. If we do get that curl today and we start to move back to the upside, to take it off once we see the curl back to the downside and then just wait for the equilibrium to set up and then play the break of the equilibrium, whether you could do it with strangles or straddles or whatever it is, just play the breakout with shares. Uh, Netflix. Yeah, this is a play I'm interested in going out the money calls because we, we have to anticipate that Netflix chart's been a little bit stronger than everybody else. We have to anticipate the earnings are going to be good because of the coronavirus, the amount of new subscriptions that have come into Netflix. I, that's what I'm assuming here. But the chart is also telling us something. The chart is doing this. Let's look at this chart. So I was looking at this chart and thinking, yeah, it's looking really strong here, right? It just continuously you know, is setting up these higher lows along the way. And now I'm looking for that breakout. And if you look at this, you could kind of say, well, it's an inverse head and shoulders as well. And it's near this clear level that it's, you know, struggled with since the top of 2018, okay? trading sideways, not being able to break that level. And now Kumo Cloud, we held it yesterday and we held the eight exponential and that's the thing here for me. It's setting up higher lows off of the eight exponential. So I'm anticipating we're going to see a break. That's what I want to see. So we're going to see a break. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking at 400 calls. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to look at 400 calls and I'll look at them for May. I don't want to go too far out because I do want to get a nice reaction on, on the trade. And I'm thinking 400 for May start a position today that's going to be the setup and of course if we lose and close under the eight exponential and it could salvage something from the calls then i'm going to get out of the position that's how i'm going to manage this air canada let's check it out air canada so i like the setup here i, I was talking about this on yesterday's video and it looks like it's going to be a higher open today so i do like the setup for a reversal here but also to just set up an equilibrium so to set up a curl here, come back to the upside, looks like a spinning top candlestick at the bottom of a consolidation trend, a reversal setup. We need that to get confirmed today. The open's giving us a good start. And then we look for a lower high on this chart potentially. And that could come all the way in the 17, 18 range. That's what I'd be looking for. So yes, it's a nice little setup. If if I was to play this, I just place my stop there. Just let it be, right? Let the chart develop. Give it some time. 1404. You gotta take a little bit of risk in order to make a decent amount of money. 1404, that's the level I'd be watching. CGC, bull position. Well, CGC's got that upper trend line that we gotta watch here on this hourly chart. And you can see we also have that, the, that descending wedge, sorry, descending triangle. So we wanna make sure we get a break up over this descending triangle, right in this range over here. And a breakout of the Kumo Cloud, which would be today in that 1450 range. So CGC right now is trading at 1401, 1408. One thing you could do is very simply, hey, you want to get in? Hey, S&P just went green. You want to get in? Stop at 1340. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to do. So simple. It's right there. Low risk trade. Very low risk. And if we get a breakout, if the chart does break out and it comes back to test its highs, that was a good risk to reward setup. Right? What is the risk reward percentage wise here? Let's just double check this. Sometimes I get too excited and then, okay, 3%. And then that would be to test our highs. Yeah, see, that's good. Five to one, five to one risk to reward. I like that setup. 
if it breaks 1343, forget it. Let the chart develop some more. That's how I would be doing it. All right, let's move on and talk about... Hey, congratulations to Caesar Monster for winning the Fit Poker Tournament last night, beating our professional Mikey Gentile in the finals. Kept me up all night, though. Okay, what do we got here? Pen. Pen Bull. LK. USO we already did. USO we already did. PXD, VXX, SQ, Twitter. And we already did space. All right, so let's check out Pen. So Pen, yeah, you know what? I actually was putting Pen on the video yesterday, and then, you know, I decided to take it off. I think Pen is going to be a beautiful bounce again. We're going to be looking for Pen to make a beautiful bounce. Let's see what Pen's bidding at right now. Let me just check this out over here. And some reason it's not showing me so 1921 let's check it out here while we're trading at extended hours 1934 so you can see pen was the bounce winner out of all stocks that i could find that i watch anyways this was the bounce winner it bounced over 300 percent off the bottom right obviously it was the uh, loser as well from the top to the bottom because it dropped from 40 down to three dollars and now we've consolidated we've consolidated really good here in terms of the pullback, this is a decent amount of pullback. If you look at this, that is a 43% pullback. So significant pullback. So we should be looking for a curl back up on this chart. So a couple of things I'm going to be watching today. If it could get to the 8 exponential, that would be the easiest play. If it curls off at the 8 exponential, then we know, okay, there's some algo activity coming off of here or trader activity coming off of here. Or just wait for that 15 minute to trend change because we could be looking back at 11, 12, in that range and that's over a 15 20 percent bounce from here so that's a decent opportunity so watch for a 15 minute trend change on pen let's look at this here and let's go extended hours off eight exponential we get a close over it now the key is when we get a close over it because we've seen these closes right seen a close when we get a close over it we want to get a hold over it Hold on a second, guys. So we want to get a hold over it. So essentially, what does that mean? The 8 exponential. How do I get this off? I've never turned that on before. And now it's good. So we get a close over it. So something that looks like this. So that's the 8 exponential. And then we get the move over it. We want to see close over it. Back test hold. That's your entry. That's how I would play it right there. That's my entry. And then, of course, if it does break to a 15 minute higher high, you could continue to add <coughs> to the position, anticipating we're going to see a move, a corrective move on the hourly chart, daily chart, at least back to that $12 range or low 11s. That's where the 8 exponential is. LK, this is a risky play right now. This is a very risky play. So, yesterday was great action for that original bounce because that's everybody's watching everyone wants to get in it it's a shiny object it's it's like oh look at this, this is going to be an easy bounce and it was but there's always the risk that it gets halted and then you're stuck in the halt um but as of right now wanting to play this name you have to be concerned that what if there is a halt okay what if this is a significant uh trap here so just be cautious if you're going to play it be tight with it okay be tight with it and essentially all you want to do is play the breakout that's what I would do. I would play the breakout. So you got a breakout of these two levels. You got one level over here, and that's not right. Let's get this on. Two levels. You got 678 and 730. And currently we're trading at 637. Let me see what we're trading at right now in the pre-market, 665. So those are the two levels. And if you get a break and you don't get follow through, then you know, hey, nobody cares anymore. It's not gonna get follow through, so don't play it. That's what I'd be watching. USO, we already did. PXD. Let's check out PXD. And this is Pioneer Natural Resources. So likely getting some pump from the oil and gas situation. Yesterday was a big upper wick while we got into the gap. That's a little bit of a red flag, of course, but now likely with the futures market in terms of oil seeing a nice move, potentially we're trading back up there. 75.15 and we're trading at... 77.85 so that's the key level really you want to break yesterday's high and then you got a gap right if you break yesterday's high 81.48 great if you don't 
then you know potentially you're going to get stifled in this range for a little bit and have to come back down and if we do break that range then you're looking up over here at 101.90 lack of resistance gap fill you could be looking at this as a potential little bit of like an ascending rising wedge as well let's zoom in here we could see a little bit of a rising wedge here on the four hour chart actually it looks like it might be a channel let's look at this here might be a channel in this range no it's a little bit of a rising wedge here so looking at it from this perspective here just watch out for that as well as you come to that level today just watch out for that as well a little bit of a rising wedge in that range so watch out for that but there is a nice gap above four hour kumo cloud there is a wick there so if we get back to that kumo cloud today want to get a nice penetration into it and not continue to reject it vxx puts yeah i you know i, I could see this being a really good play this is looking like a large bear flag to me and i'm surprised it hasn't broken down yet but it's really waiting to see obviously it's got it's got support from all the coronavirus headlines, right? And the S&P 500 not fully breaking out. And if S&P 500 does fully break out, just went back red here. If it does fully break out, then we anticipate this is going to break. But it is a bear flag. It is rejecting the 8 exponential. You want to break this lower trend line. So you want to see the VIX start to collapse today, break down further. As of right now, it's down 1.5%. You want to see a big collapse and ultimately you want it to lose. And I'm using v VXX here. Why did I do that? Let's look at VIX. No, you said v VXX. But anyways, you can see the VIX is pulling back down here. And essentially, you want VXX bear flag to confirm. Break down this level and then come down 39.50 and lose 39.50. Ultimately, that's what you want to see. SQ. Looking for a bullish position. Okay, so spinning top candlestick. Red, but there's still a gap down below. We have to be cautious about this gap over here. So notable that... It is curling, potentially ready to curl without coming and fill the gap. All these scenarios, like you always prefer that they do come fill the gap, but sometimes they might not. 45.70, so we're looking pretty much at the flat open. If we use, if we lose yesterday's low, then you just have to say, you know what, let's just be patient until that gap fills. Off of this move, off of the bottom here, if we look at this, where are we? We look like we're at the 0.5. And yeah, we're right on the 0.5 here. So golden pocket is nearby also at 41.75 and 42.61. And last one we're going to do here is Twitter. Twitter, same thing. Yes, Morningstar potential needs to be confirmed today. How much have we given back? This looks like golden pocket. Yeah, right in the golden pocket. So this is a nice setup to get confirmed today. And that's what I'd be looking for in terms of stop at the low. A little bit of risk, 22.36 for a move back, potential 10% move back to the 8 exponential on the daily. That's decent. Let me see what Twitter is bidding at right now. It is a higher open though. It's coming at 24. It's coming at 24. It's already going to be confirmed opening higher. So I'd watch for the gap fill first. If you're not already in, there is a little bit of a gap being left behind at this current open. That's it, guys. It's the end of the week. Hope you've had a great week already. Ready to make it an even better week. After big trades like USO, don't get over aggressive. Don't get loose. Always think about your account, right? Think about your account, like how hard it is to build up those accounts. And when you set up those accounts and your account's looking like this and then you get that big move, eventually, when you get to this spot here, this is going to come, right? This is going to come. And depending on how aggressive you get up here and how loose you get and you start taking more more and more trades and random trades, you, you end up like expediting this move to the downside. You want to avoid that expediting move to the downside. You want to make sure that your next trade is also a great trade, okay? You still be picky. You still be selective because what happens is when you do this and you get to this point, this is your make or break for weeks to come because when you get to this point, your next trade either recovers or it does this. And when this happens, you have regret. And you think about where you were when you were back up at this position. And then it's hard to recover from because you gave back too much. But it's all about avoiding this and instead doing this. But if you still make good trades up here in this range, if you still make good trades up here in this range, 
You can change all this. You don't get too aggressive up over here. You don't get too loose. You don't start playing everything. You don't start looking at the chat room and saying, hey, this guy's playing this, this guy's playing this. I'm gonna go play that. No, you stick to the same thing that was working over here. Even though it wasn't huge, you got that huge trade and you start to do this instead. Okay, you start to do this and then we get the next trade and then your account goes like this. That's the idea. Don't get loose up here because then this happens and then this next trade is so important and if it breaks down, you got nothing but regret. Peace.